Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome everyone. You're listening to Day of Prayer's my morning Bible study. We're so glad you can join us. Before we get into the word, let's pray. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that you are consistent in the same every and each day, Lord, and that you consistently show your love and your grace and mercy to us, Lord. Even if we do do not do everything perfectly, Lord, but that you still draw us into repentance, Lord, and usher us back into your will, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you that you also do that to others, Lord, and that you give us the opportunity to show your love to other people in our lives, Lord, and that way we can reflect accurately who and what you are, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, good morning. Welcome, everybody. We're glad to have you with us as we study the Word together. And we're continuing our study on the Lord's house. And we are, yes, still... Uh, I'll say the baseline scripture for today is still Ezekiel 43, 1 through 12. Amen. Although we are covering many scriptures in that. So, can I get a volunteer to read that section of scripture, please? I will. All right, sir. Afterward, he brought me to the gate, the gate that faces towards the east. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way to the east. His voice was like the sound of many waters, and the earth shone with the glory. It was like the appear- appearance of the vision which I saw, like the vision which I saw when I came to destroy the city. The visions were like the visions which I, s- which I saw by the river Sebar, and I fell on my face, and the glory of the Lord came into the temple by way of the gate which faces towards the east. The Spirit lifted me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. (coughs) (coughs) Then I heard him speaking to me from the temple, while a man stood beside me. He said to me, Son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. No more shall the children of Israel defile my holy name. They, nor their kings, by the hollow tree or with the carcasses of their kings, on their high places. When they set their threshold by my threshold and their doorpost by my doorpost, with the wall between them and me, they defiled my holy name by the abominations which they committed. Therefore I consumed them in my anger. Now the carcasses of... Wait. Now let them put their hollow tree in the carcasses of their kings far away from me, and I will dwell in their midst forever. Son of man, describe the temple to the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities, and let them measure the pattern. And if they are ashamed of all they have done, make known to them the design of the temple and its arrangements, its exits exits and its entrances, its entire design and all its ordinances, all, all its forms and all its laws. Write it down on their sight so that they may keep it, keep its whole design, all its ordinances, and perform them. This is the law of the temple. The whole area surrounding the mountaintop is most holy. Behold, this is the law of the temple. Mm-hmm. Amen. So, in the last episode, we had discussed a number of different things, right? Abraham, Moses... Joshua and all these different places where they were and we we talked about patterns, right? Yes. Yes. And then we ended with a couple of questions, a few questions. Because our brother Dean added one, which was a great question by the way, brother. Can so read them to you? Yeah, I was going to ask uh, who remembers the questions? I do. Did you write them down? I wrote my. I wrote them down. No, I just let the Holy Spirit stain it on my brain. Oh, 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 oh okay. Well, even better. So, what are they? The first question that was asked was, "What makes something holy?" Then the second question that Dad asked was, "How does that apply to us?" And then the question that Mr. Dean asked was, um, "How long have we been standing on holy ground and we not realized it?" 
Mm. Mm. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. So, what I have written down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what makes the ground holy? What makes mm-hmm. the ground holy? And how does this pertain to our lives? And how often have you been standing on holy ground and not been aware of it? Mm-hmm. Yes. So. Bravo. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I wasn't going to say anything. It was off, but it was still the, the, it, gist, the gist of it. Was exactly. The gist. So, but, I was giving mm-hmm. grace. I was giving Amen. grace. No, no, you did well, Layla. Absolutely. Well. But there is certainly a blessing and benefit in writing down what the Lord says. Amen. As he said to them in Ezekiel, write it down. Make it plain. Well, we're, we're well that's about Habakkuk. laws and statutes and the way that things happen. So mm-hmm. we know if we're, we, um, well, we, it, it's fact, it's proven. If you write something down, it helps you remember it better. It does. That's it does. That's why you do mm-hmm. it. Even if you have read it again, you remember it better. So mm-hmm. there is always benefit in writing things down. Mm-hmm. It reinforces Layla, the learning. You wrote it on the tablet of your heart, which I appreciate. And the mm-hmm. Lord brings all things to your remembrance, which he said to you. So I appreciate that. You did a good job, sweetheart. I was just having fun with you. <laughs> so I want to open the floor and give everybody the opportunity to answer the question. And share what the Holy Spirit is speaking, ministering to you about it before we move forward. And of course, if you got questions on what we were discussing, please ask them. All right. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So who would like to begin? <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, Mama, were you going to begin? No, no. I'm, I I'm, I, you, I think you guys said you had I the will answers. Begin. Well, I will begin. All okay. right, but Charles? Unless, well, you can... You go ahead, Le Charles. Go. Well, okay. ladies first. Ladies first. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, to the first question about um, Deb, when you asked us what makes the ground holy, mm-hmm. um, I had looked through the scriptures, and when Jesus was asking, or he was actually telling the Pharisees, it wasn't what went into a man that defiled him but it was what came out and then um thinking about the coal in isaiah it wasn't um the coal itself that cleansed isaiah but it was the anointing that god had on it that cleansed him and made him able to stand before him so it wasn't the ground itself that they were standing on that was holy it was the anointing of god's glory that made it holy it was his presence so Um, as an example, I stand in my bedroom. It's not holy carpet now because I'm standing there, but it becomes holy and sanctified when God comes in and it's his presence and it's his glory that makes it that way. So we're only holy when we're filled with God's glory, when we're filled with his spirit, then we become holy. But just us by ourselves with, uh, no assistance from the Lord is absolutely unholy. And so it wasn't Joshua himself or Moses himself or Abraham himself that that made the ground holy. It wasn't their um, existence in that place or the place itself. It was the Lord that made it and caused it to be holy. Secondly, or actually, I'll let the boys answer the first question and then we can move to the second question and then wrap up with the third question. <laughs> <laughs> Sound wisdom. Okay. Okay. Bobby, did you want to go first? Well, oh. somebody go. Let's I'll go. I want to go to Proverbs twenty twenty five. Okay. Ah. <coughs> okay, is everybody there? I'll read it. It is a snare for a man to devote rashly something as holy and afterward to reconsider his vows. Okay, hmm. by looking at this... Uh, proverb that Solomon wrote it is a mindset that makes something holy or how you view something it is your mental attitude towards it like an example is how people quote think the holy grail is considered holy because it's the cup Jesus drank out of but anything that what we place value is as we consider holy Mm. so it's the same same is true with the Lord Everything the Lord does is holy. Everything he does. But if we place value on it, only then do we see it as holy. 
We don't see the stick Jesus picked up as holy. We don't say holy stick. No, we don't say that. But it's how we place it and look at it in our own lives. A perfect example is how people travel to Israel to go to the Mount of Olives and the place Jesus prayed in the garden. How they put value in all those things. But what about all the places that Jesus walked? Aren't they holy ground? It's how they consider it in their mind. So it's a mindset. And that's what you see in this proverb. It's how the person thinks about it and they consider holy. And they don't think about it correctly. Hmm. That's what Psalm is saying when they don't think about it correctly. Okay. I want to hear what promise has to say. I do, yes. Okay, I'd say what makes um, something, someone holy is... We we're talking about the ground. What makes the ground holy. Go ahead. Oh. Well, this still goes to it. Okay. <laughs> with, <laughs> with, some, with someone being obedient. And when they're obedient, you have all the blessings. And when the person's obedient, the an, anointing comes from the Lord through the person and to someplace else. And also, what the Lord calls holy. Explain. Like, for example, hmm. for example, with Mount Sinai, or the mount they're pronouncing, wait, or the mountain that they're talking about the blessings for the people. Okay. That that mountain, but yet will be the temple. The temple is made from regular stuff, but the Lord called the regular stuff holy. The Lord called the regular stuff holy because He considered that holy. Mm-hmm. And you also see what the tabernacle, I believe, and how the clouds look. <laughs> The cloud of the Lord came in, and when the cloud of the Lord came in, that's when it became holy, not when it was first made, because right then it would be the, def- it would be unclean. Okay. Anyone else? But I would say um, very quickly in promises, comment about the tabernacle. <coughs> By all technicalities, because the tabernacle had to be a holy <coughs> object for the Lord to have dwelt there without it having to be destroyed, the um, the wood, the gold, whatever it was, had to be sanctified and cleansed first before it could be used mm-hmm. as his hol- as the materials to build his holy habitation. So, <coughs> you know, and I'll say that for the second question. I'd say um, there's an aspect of all three that are correct. Because if you look at look at it, how what Promise was saying about the wood and stuff, how it was just common. It was just wood and gold. But it was consecrated, as Leo was pointing out. It was a mindset of that was what makes something holy. Consecration itself does not make it holy. Just because I bathe every day, I know I'm holy because the Lord has make, made me holy. But that's not what's considered holy because Jesus said we are the temple. The temple itself is moot. It doesn't matter. Mean what I say no, the no. temple itself I don't judge by my facial <laughs> expressions. Don't don't don't. But do um consecration, the word in of itself means you set something apart and sanctify yes. it to be holy. So even if it was something previously unholy and it's acceptable for God to God for you to, to do so with the item, whatever it is, or yourself, you know, to set yes. it apart does bring it into holiness. But an item, a stick here nor there, as you were referencing. So consecration does bring it into a fellowship with God. But so pick a different word. <laughs> That's what I mean. So like how you're describing it to articulate what you're saying. What I'm saying is just because you cleanse something with the process described in the law doesn't make it. What the Lord wanted when he created the law was obedience from the children of Israel. Okay. That's so it. washing it, ceremonial washings is what you're talking yes. about. Ceremonial washing. Okay. 
now it does not make something holy. We know we're holy because of Jesus in our lives and the anointing that he places on each and one, every one of us. But what the Lord was de- trying to get the children of Israel to understand through the law was obedience to what the Lord is telling them. Though it may seem complex and complicated, he just wanted their obedience. Because if you see for Moses, Moses was talk, the Lord talked with Moses face to face and Moses was obedient mostly. Though he made a mistake when he struck the rock. But Moses was mostly obedient and that's what the Lord desired was obedience from him. From the children of Israel. So what I was saying it here is that it is a mindset that is in line with how the Holy Spirit is talking to you and using you in the moment that makes something holy. So it's having the same mindset and attitude towards something that the Lord has. Okay. And I, I would jump in on that and say <clears throat> I think there is certainly where we should consider that. Uh, I think... Um, what you were just saying, Le Charles. Um, I mean, at, 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 a, at a level, um, God created everything. Yes. The, the entire mm-hmm. universe did not exist. He mm-hmm. didn't make it from something else. So every mineral, everything on the periodic table of elements, everything was mm-hmm. created by him for a mm-hmm. very specific purpose Amen. that represents his glory. He, he, he put, you know, Two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule together to form water. I mean, um, Amen. I mean, he he it was designed from that, but he also used hydrogen for something else, and he also used oxygen for something else, and he, this this infinite, intricate, wonderful design. Mm-hmm. So, um, if we go to where we've been camping out at forty three twelve, and mm-hmm. we take the word holy <coughs> that's used there in the original text, Kadesh, mm-hmm. which we've talked about a few times in recent mm-hmm. podcasts. The definition is apartness or sacredness, Mm -hmm. Um, origin from kadash, a sacred thing, place, um, rarely abstract sanctity. It's used, uh, usage is consecrated, dedicated, hallowed, holiness, holy, Mm -hmm. saint, sanctuary. These are the definitions of that word. Yes. But for me in my mind to process, especially when we talk about the sacred things we talk about the washing the ceremonial washing um i would be questioning in my mind i'm not going to pose a question okay. i'm not going to answer the question with a question <laughs> but i would pose in my mind did the ceremon- ceremonial component there make something holy or was it because it was always holy and it was defiled and it removed what was defiled about it so that it could be regarded again back into the original mm. way it was? Is that not what happened to us in the garden? Hmm. So we could... We could we started out pon- holy, then... Right, we could ponder all that uh-huh. around, right? So uh, at one level, everything is holy. But there's also God made it clear. I set you apart to be a holy, mm-hmm. right? So there's, that's always a challenge when we try to use language as human beings to describe the infinite being of God and all that he means by anything. Mm-hmm. But certainly I would agree with the mindset and we certainly should look at everything as being holy and everything having the opportunity to offer God glory is when it becomes defiled that it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yes. And, of course, we're the ones that defile it. <laughs> Sin can only defile. It can never make uh-huh. anything clean. It can never make it reusable. It can never make it whole. It can never make anything sound. Sin only corrupts. It only defiles. It only breaks down. Yes, uh-huh. and it's only Christ's blood Amen. that redeems us Amen. and restores our holiness. Amen. 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 So I I like how I are you going to talk? Oh, oh, go I'm ahead, sorry, honey. Baby. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I love you. I love you, honey. <laughs> right. That's right. You, you didn't follow it up. <laughs> <laughs> nah. No, right now I didn't earn the honey, honey. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just joking. You love me. You're a good husband to me. Um, there has been a an intermingling of words as we were as I was listening to the how, how each of you answered the question. What makes the ground holy? There was each of you an intermingling of what makes me holy, what mm-hmm. makes the person holy. And it was very interesting. 
when you hear the Lord's Prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth, on earth. And we might think of the planet, but then you also have to think of the dirt that's also called earth. And then you're thinking, oh, we're earth. And then, because we're made from the dust of the ground. And then, you know, you you just keep tracking with God and you're like, oh, okay. So it still ends up to you going, you do what I said. <laughs> you make, you find your place on earth, just like my will is for you in heaven. You become what I asked you to be. And so I like how that was um, brought together in one and the way that everybody answered that question, that we are the ground that is holy. And yes, God has a place for the natural earth and restoring it to its place. And um, we, we've said that before in previous podcasts, how the, the earth is groaning and travailing, waiting for the sons of God to be made manifest. It's, it's waiting for the restoration where it doesn't have to be subject to sin anymore because the Lord subjugated it at the same time that Adam, the man and woman fell the earth became subjugated to the curse and sin. And at the same, when we are redeemed, the earth is going to have its opportunity to be restored. It doesn't have to drink in blood anymore. It doesn't have to witness or be a part of unrighteousness. You know, the trees will clap their hands in glory to the Lord. It doesn't want to be used for being made into Asherah poles or, you know, whatever else and demonic sacrifice and things of that nature. It wants to glorify God. The earth knows its purpose and what it's supposed to be doing, but it can't fulfill it just yet because it's way God has a plan for redemption for everything. So I just thought that was really, really interesting how that came together. Mm-hmm. If everybody could turn to Acts 7, please. Acts 7? Yes. Uh, we're going there because it recaptures some of what we were discussing yesterday and some of the scriptures. First <clears throat> begins in verse... 29. Okay. Um, what verse are you going to? Let's go through 34 you first. Want me to read it? Please, yes. 29 through 34? Yes. Then at this saying, Moses fled and became a dweller in the land of Midian, where he had two sons. And when 40 years had passed, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in a bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. When Moses saw it, he marveled at the sight. And as he drew near to observe, the voice of the Lord came to him, saying, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses trembled and dared not look. Then the Lord said to him, Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I have surely been... Uh, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their groaning and have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. Mm-hmm. So just a reminder of, of the section of scripture we went over yesterday, right? Where the Lord said that to Moses. Hey, this is holy ground, right? Also, can you read verses 44, same, same thing, Acts 7, 44 through 50, please. Acts 7, 44 through 50? Yes. Okay. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, and he appointed, instructing Moses to make it according to the pattern, I'm sorry, as he appointed, instructing Moses to make it according to the pattern that he had seen, which our fathers, having received it in turn, also brought with Joshua into the land possessed by the Gentiles, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of David, who found favor before God and asked to find a dwelling for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands. As the prophet says, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Has my hand not made all these things? Mm-hmm. So, let's, let's look at a couple things, right? One, the Lord said this is holy ground, right? Yes. yes. And two, we're talking about the house of the Lord. It says very plainly, the house isn't made by human hands, right? Yes. If. Okay. So we have to 
Well, also, there's, there's one more section of scripture, and I'll read that. It's in Hebrews 12. <clears throat> it says, uh, it begins at verse 18 through 21, right? It says, For you have not come <clears throat> excuse me, to the mountain that may be touched and burned with fire, and to blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, so that those who hear it beg that the word would not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure <coughs> what was commanded. And if so much as a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was that sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. Right? So, let's, let's, again, let's look at a few things. The whole, in, in Ezekiel 43, the whole mountaintop is holy, right? Mm -hmm. And in the yes. first sections of scripture that we covered there, what did it say? The glory of the Lord came down, right? Verse 4, again, that he stood in the temple, the door of the temple, right? Yes. Verse yes. 6 and 7, he called out from the temple, Right? Yes. But again, it's not a temple made by human hands. Right? Yes. Yes. So, let's let's also look at a few other scriptures here. Um and and each of you had great points in answering the question. If we put them together, there is a complete answer in there. And the first thing is it's holy because the Lord said it was holy. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. I believe Promise said that. That he called it holy. And we yes. actually see that in a number of places. What was the, uh, in Jeremiah, chapter 1. And what was the word to Jeremiah? He says, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. And I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Right? Mm. Yes. Okay. That's not the only time he says that. We can go to the book of John. And let me find my place here real quick. Oh. John 15, verses 15 through 17. Everybody there? He says... No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. Here's the key, verse 16. You did not choose me, mm -hmm. but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain Amen. And whatever you ask the Father Amen. in my name, he Amen. may give you. These things I command you, that you love me, one, as, or, or sorry, excuse me, that you love one another. <coughs> and not only does he say it there, um, let's also look at the high priestly prayer in John 17. He says something very interesting. Uh, begins at verse 20. I'll read 20 through 24. So that's John 17, 20 through 24. It says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Amen. Oh, sorry. Let me back up a second. Okay. Um, he's praying about his disciples and... All disciples, right? It's a high priestly prayer. Not just the ones that are with him, but in the future. Us. Yes, that's a, and that includes us. Amen. It says in verse 16, They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may be one as you, Father, 
are in me, and I in you, that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. Amen. I in them, and you in me, that they may have been perfect, may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you give me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the mm. world. Okay? Wow. Does this mm. sound an awful lot like what we've been reading in every place, especially in Ezekiel? The glory of the Lord, and even in Revelation, right? There's no temple in heaven. It says God and the Lamb are the temple. Yes. Right? And we talked about that at the beginning of this House of the Lord study. Right? There's the interconnectedness. We and them, or I and you and you and me, and they and us, right? The Godhead. In us, right? Beholding the glory of the Lord. And also, there's a, another section of scripture that we're going to get to here. Um, let me find it quickly. Mm. It's in Romans, right? Because it's a temple not built by human hands, but the temple beholds the glory of the Lord, right? Yes. Okay. And that comes from obedience. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Some versions say reasonable service of worship. And then it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? So, in this, we are the temple of the Lord, right? Yes. yes. That from the beginning, we have seen, he desired to be with the people, right? Yes. But even in where we started in Hebrews, they rejected him. He called them holy. He called them his people. But they rejected him. He also says, and, and this was brought up, be holy for I am holy. He calls those things holy that are holy. And yes, it also, as Layla, you pointed out in answering the question, is due to his presence. If he calls them holy, then he resides there. His presence is there. So his presence should be living and dwelling in us if we have believed on him, right? Because of his love, yes. he's given us grace that we can access through faith that he comes and abides in us and we abide in him, right? Yes. Okay, so his presence lives and dwells in us. So his glory should be displayed at all times in and through us. We are the temple. It's what he desired from the beginning, mm -hmm. right? There should constantly be light and smoke mm -hmm. and all those things <laughs> displayed through us, right? We see that with yes. Moses, right? I'll, he says, I'll raise up a prophet like you from amongst the people. Of course, referring to Jesus. When mm -hmm. Jesus clearly shown the glory of the Lord. We see that in the transfiguration, do we not? So much so that it changed the color of his outfit, of the clothes, the garments he had on. And they became the brightest white that I think anyone has probably ever seen. That's what that looks like. That's our pattern and example, right? It talk, talks about the pattern. See that you follow the pattern fully, 
right? Yes. yes. Okay. And it only happens when we submit our will, entire, our will, our being, everything to the Lord, trusting Him, mm-hmm. allowing Him to reside, and not defiling ourselves, not defiling the dwelling place of the Lord, but allowing Him to dwell in us in the fullness of His glory. And yes, and you know, Dean, I think we were discussing this about, uh, and even we talked, read this in Scripture, right? The people trembled. It made people afraid, uh, almost to the point they didn't want to associate or hang out with them. All right? Yes. And we see that even in, in Jesus and his ministry on earth. Yep, there were people that thronged to him, absolutely. But there were many that didn't and didn't want to believe. They rejected him, just like we see in the pattern. Right? Yes. Which brings us back to what we were discussing also on the calling part. You didn't choose me. I chose you, right? I called you. There's a calling, a plan, a purpose for every person. Mm -hmm. Every person that's ever been on this earth. There is a calling, a plan, and a purpose. He chose you. In that choosing is a calling. No, it doesn't mean that we're all going to be leaders. We're all going to be Abrahams or Moseses or Davids or... Right? Any of the other prophets. That's not what what he's talking about. But there are leaders that he has selected. And that's in the calling. But we have to submit to him. To be conformed to the image, the likeness, displaying the character, nature, and attributes found in him. Which were demonstrated in our pattern example, Jesus. So, with the questions that we'd asked, it's holy because he declared it holy. Mm -hmm. But he declared it holy because he had already sanctified it, called it for a purpose. But we have to come into that purpose, right? And how does this pertain to our lives? We are the temple of the Lord, a temple not made by human hands. Also, if we look back, we were talking about it in Exodus 19 and 20. Right? Yes. Actually, and and in Ezekiel 43. Right after he talks about the law of the temple, he then goes into the altar in both of those sections. This is before the temple is even built. But we just read, we are a living sacrifice. Right? Yes. Yes. And in, in Exodus, the altar was supposed to be an altar of dirt. What did he make man from? Dirt. Okay. So do we now start seeing the connections and and start piecing that together? We are the altar. We are a living sacrifice. Right? Yes. Yes. For the Lord. Dedicated for him. For his we are a living sacrifice for him. And Peter also tells us that we're living stones being built into into the Lord's house, right? Yes. Yes. What did it say? If you're, if you decide to make an altar out of stone, it's got to be what? Not cut. Not cut, Not cut stone, tools. but Not fashioned tools. how the Lord designed us, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. We're living stones, and He's choosing to live and dwell in us. Mm-hmm. In Him, we have our life, and our being, right? Yes. 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 And, and everything else provision and all the other things that we've been discussing so so things to recognize and then dean your question which goes along with this which was how often have we been standing how have yes thank you have we been standing on holy ground and not been aware of it the answer is clearly yes daily daily moment by moment we're on holy ground. Mm-hmm. And it says the whole mountaintop is holy. That's the first law. or Sorry, mm-hmm. the first law. That's the law of the temple. Mm-hmm. The whole mountaintop is holy. Well, mm-hmm. we're a city on a hill that can't be hidden. Amen. Which means it's an elevated position. Which means it's a hill, a mountaintop, right? Yes. Shouldn't we stand out? Shouldn't we be displaying the light and the glory of the Lord mm-hmm. through the whole earth? Yes. yes, and how we can look at that holiness is 
the entirety of the mountain and the entirety of us equals spirit, soul, and body. Amen. Not just the outside of us, but the inside is rotten. Not just our spirit, man, but the soul is still un, unrefined and unchastened of the Lord. But spirit, soul, and body come into the holiness and the presence of God. Be presented blameless. Mm-hmm. I would just say, um, with caution the listeners, don't let the weight of that weigh you down. It's supposed to be weighty. Absolutely. Allow the Lord to work through that. Ask him not to weigh you down with it, but what does he want you to do right now? And not what does he want you to do next week? Just right now, what's the next step for you? Mm -hmm. If that description of the temple is bringing you to feel ashamed, is your understanding where your temple isn't all that it should be, just allow the God to work it. Allow God to work on you in that moment about mm-hmm. that. He will. Mm-hmm. He'll guide you. It doesn't have to be weighty. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to weigh you down. It just leads to repentance. Mm-hmm. leads to changes. And he'll equip you and guide you to do that. Mm-hmm. Through tenderness and loving kindness. Amen. Mm-hmm. Any questions on that? No. No. All right. Well, I know we've gone over. Um, so please forgive me in that. Um, we try to be considerate of people's time. And I really just felt that we need to get this this out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yes. So I want to be obedient to the Lord and um, do. and make sure that we have, because he, he's complete. He lacks nothing. And he gives us everything we need in order to pursue him. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. All right. So let's pause there for today. And uh, with that, can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we just thank you for sanctifying us, Lord, for consecrating us and setting us apart for your holy purposes, Lord. And we just submit ourselves under your hand right now, Lord, to do as it is that you've commanded us to do, Lord, in all excellence, with all zeal and all vigor, Lord, with all our soul, heart, mind, and strength, Lord, with everything that we have, we go after you, Lord. And we just thank you for being who you are, Lord, and for cleansing us from all unrighteousness, Lord, and for setting us back on that track that you have set before us to walk on, Lord. And we just thank you for the people you've placed in our lives, Lord, to walk with us in that, God, to um, be an intercessor, Lord, and to help us continue to grow in you, Lord, and we can help them continue to grow in you as well, Lord, and we just help each other, and we can grow together, Lord, as you have designed us and called us to do. Mm-hmm. So, Lord, we just thank you today for your mercy and your grace and your love, Lord, and the peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord, and the satisfaction and the satisfying of our hearts that you've given us today, Lord, fulfilling us with your fullness and your blessings. So we just thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. We love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.